This video is not for kids. Go do your homework. Hey everyone, we did it. We got to a thousand subscribers on this channel and I'm so happy and so grateful to everyone that's hopped on this journey with me. And as promised, I'm gonna do a Q&A video so you can get to know just a little bit more about me. So anyway, let's get to it. So I did my best to kind of categorize everything so that there's some flow to this Q&A. And there are some questions I got asked like multiple times, so I'm only gonna answer them once. And so that's one reason I don't wanna like say who asked which question or whatever, but I'm gonna try and answer pretty much every question I got asked, so here we go. First question was just, ASL. And if you don't know what ASL is, that probably means you're under the age of 30. But when the internet first came out and we just had chat rooms and it, all you had was like, a lot of times you didn't even have a profile picture. It was just sort of like a default icon and a screen name. You wouldn't know anything about the person you were chatting to in a chat room. So A slash S slash L just means age gender location. So age, I am 38 years old. Gender. I am a cisgender male. And location, I live in Portland, Oregon. Well, for at least the next couple of months. I'm actually moving this summer to the South, which is where I'm originally from. So we're gonna be near family and friends again. So I'm excited about that. But yeah, right now I'm in Portland, Oregon, but I'm gonna be in North Carolina in just a few months. Do you have a partner? Yes, I have a partner. Uh, we've been together since 2004. So we're coming up on 20 years, which is kind of crazy. I don't even like saying that out loud. That sounds like a really long time, but yeah, we've been together about 19 years. I just heard him walk past the door. <laughs> What is your day job? So I own a small business. I've owned it for about 10 years now, and it was just me in the beginning and just as a business in the party and event space that I bootstrapped basically from nothing and grew it into I mean, it's still a small business, but it's still quite a large business. We've had multiple employees over the years. And at this point in time, my partner actually co-owns it with me. Uh, he came on board in 20... 15, I think it was full time. So he's been doing that full time as well. And we also have a third partner in the business. So yeah, like I said, it's a small business in the party and event space. And I'm, the main thing I'm responsible for now is the designing and overseeing of the, the development of the product line. So that's really my background. I went to school for graphic design and that kind of parlayed into doing toy design and character design after I graduated. And from, yeah, so I graduated college in 07, and then from there, I basically worked as an independent designer between 07 and 2013, doing character design, and I did work for small companies and big companies, so everything from just doing small projects on my own that I sold on my own, own shop online to working with companies like Urban Outfitters and Disney, and I actually worked with Disney Channel, or Disney Television Animation, uh, aka the Disney Channel, and did a lot of work with them, sort of behind the scenes, doing pitch work and developing storyboards and stuff, so that was pretty cool, but uh, I'll maybe in another video, if y'all are interested, I can talk a little bit more about my past as a character and toy designer, but that was sort of something I kind of left behind in 2013 to start a business. And I've been doing that for 10 years. Are your eyes two different colors? Kinda. I actually have what's called sectoral heterochromia, which essentially is a fancy way of saying that one of my eyes is like partially two different colors. So my left eye is blue and my right eye is like three quarters blue and one quarter green. And it's just a genetic mutation. It's not anything that's like harmful any, or anything. It's super rare, actually. I think uh, I read, I actually looked it up for this video. I think I saw that only like six and 10,000 people have it, which I believe because I've never met anybody in my entire life that has this condition. But like I said, it's completely benign. I've had it my whole life. It's just, yeah, one of my eyes decided to be a little bit green in one part. How did you discover American Girl slash Pleasant Company dolls? Actually, it was kind of a weird set of coincidences, I guess. I basically saw them in the catalogs in the late 80s when they were mailed to our house. And I actually don't have any sisters or anything. And I think the reason we were getting the catalogs at our house is my mom actually owned a dance school. So I'm guessing that's how she got on the mailing list for Pleasant Company. But for a few years we were getting those catalogs and obviously they stopped because we didn't buy anything from them. So uh, yeah, that's basically how I discovered them is I would get the catalogs and I would sneak off to my bedroom with them and just 
you know, pour over all the pages and think about how great it would be if I could have a doll and all the accessories and stuff that came with her. But that never happened. Well, it did happen, actually. It had just happened like 30 years later. <laughs> but yeah, that's how I discovered them. I, the catalogs were mailed to our house. And obviously the books were really popular, too. And I actually did get to read all the books, which I think somebody asked about that later. So we'll get into that in a minute. How will you celebrate 1,000 subscribers? Uh, I actually was going to celebrate by buying the twins because I was on track to basically get 1,000 subscribers right at the time they were released. But they came out just, I think, a few days before I hit 1,000. So I kind of think of Nikki and Isabel Hoffman as sort of my celebration for hitting 1,000 subscribers. What made you decide to get into doll collecting as an adult? Actually, it's kind of a sad story. Uh, I actually lost my grandmother a couple of years ago and I was really close with her and she spent a lot of time with us as kids and she was the one adult in my life that actually didn't make fun of me or judge me for being into like girl toys. Uh, you know, when I say that in quotes, obviously I don't think there's such thing as girl toys or boy toys. I just, you know, they're marketed towards specific genders, but she never judged me for like wanting a Polly Pocket or a Barbie or anything. And so whenever like, we would go to Kmart or Walmart she would you know I would kind of sneak over into the the aisle that had all the pink in it and I would pick something out and she would usually buy it for me but you know after uh she passed away a couple of years ago um you know I was having a hard time with it honestly and I didn't really know what to do because it was during like peak pandemic and I actually couldn't go to her funeral or see her any or anything and yeah, it was just was a really difficult time. And I was just, I spent a lot of time reflecting and thinking about her and, you know, our relationship and all the things that, you know, that she gave me like tools to live my life. And one of those was just not being a judgmental person. And, you know, I, I was thinking about the times that she would buy me, you know, the Polly Pockets and the Barbie here and there. And it just, I started thinking about American Girl again and how, much I loved that company and I have collected toys my whole life basically but I never really bought a doll and so yeah I was just you know awake really late one night it was probably like two o'clock in the morning and it just I don't know something came over me and I felt like it was time to buy the doll that I had wanted you know ever since I was a little kid and so I did it <laughs> I hopped on eBay and just you know kind of picked a Molly a Molly doll that spoke to me and you know click the Apple Pay button, and then cried for an hour. <laughs> when did you start collecting? So that was in the summer of 2021, so just a few months after my grandmother passed away. What do your friends and family think of your hobby? So this is one I got a lot. There were a lot of people that asked this question. I think it was actually the most asked question out of everything. And that, you know, that to me says that I think a lot of people, like a lot of doll collectors, have family members and friends that judge them really harshly, or they're worried that they will judge them harshly. And I have to say, like, I feel very lucky that I don't really have anybody that's judging me for it that's in my life anymore. Again, I'm pushing 40, so I, you know, cut all the nonsense out of my life. If there's a toxic person in my life, I just don't you know, communicate with them or keep them in my life. So, you know, I've gotten to the point where there's really nobody in my life that would judge me for something like that. So once I had been kind of collecting for a, a while, that's kind of when I was like, oh yeah, that's when it's time to kind of tell somebody or start telling like friends and family and stuff. So, you know, I didn't want to just like buy one doll and be like, this is my whole personality now and then talk everybody's ear off. So I, you know, I waited a few months before even talking about it just because I, admittedly, I think, you know, a lot of people think it's a weird thing to do, even though I don't think it's weird, but you know, it's just, it's still, I wanted to be sure that I was going to get into it before like dragging everybody along with it. But anyway, yeah, nobody's judgmental. Like most people just think it's cool. And if they are again already know me I've collected other things in my life before so this really isn't like totally off brand for me to have a bunch of dolls it's just like the current thing that I'm into right now how did you tell your friends and family you collect dolls again like I said before it was just it came up casually and I a lot of people mentioned that they were scared to bring it up and in most cases, I feel like it's one of those things that if you don't make a big deal about it, other people aren't going to make a big deal about it. It's sort of weird like that, that the more you act ashamed about something, the more someone is going to feel like they can shame you for it. So I think that's one of the keys is just, you know, not really worrying about what other people think. But anyway, one caveat I can see with that is that like if you're an adult male and you might be gay and again, not every male collector, male doll collector is gay, obviously, but I think a lot of people would s make the assumption that if you are an adult male and you collect dolls that you're like LGBT. 
if that is the case, you know, and you're worried about coming out to people or you might feel like you're in an unsafe situation, I totally understand then if you want to kind of keep that under wraps because, you know, a lot of people are going to say, oh, adult male, doll collector, big homo. So, you know, I understand like that there are some instances where you probably don't want to tell anybody because it uh, begets a longer conversation about things that you might not be ready to talk about. But other than that, if we're just talking about dolls and you're worried about somebody just judging you for having dolls, I would say stop judging yourself first if you're already judging yourself. And then I think a lot of that judgment will kind of not be as harsh from those other people. And if they want to judge you for it, then you know, who cares? I mean, that's their problem, not yours. Do your friends and family know about your YouTube channel yet? If so, how did they react? Uh, yeah, pretty much everybody in my life that is, you know, active in my life. You know, I have friends from, like, college and stuff that I still consider friends, but I haven't talked to in months or whatever. You know, those people I don't tell about because I don't talk to them regularly. But anybody that I know and talk to regularly knows about it. And it, admittedly, it was, I think I was a little bit more embarrassed that I had a YouTube channel more so than, like, that I had a bunch of dolls. But, you know, I didn't realize how fun YouTube was going to be. So I really kind of took to it like a duck to water. So once I realized that this is something I actually want to do and put out into the world I started telling more people about it and like I said admittedly I was a little embarrassed at first I kind of wanted to get my bearings on everything and how to you know on how to make decent videos and I feel like I'm getting a little bit better and still have more to work on but you know I know multiple people in my life that have YouTube channels so it's been really helpful to talk to them as well about tips on things and just bounce ideas back and forth so you know, again, nobody's reacted poorly because I, you know, I'm going to do what I do. And like I said, I'm almost 40 years old. I don't have time for nonsense. So if somebody's like going to be judgmental or not want to talk about it, then bye. See you later. Is your partner also into dolls? Uh, not one bit, actually. <laughs> so uh, he didn't even know what American Girl dolls are because he is uh, not American. <laughs> so the, I remember like when I came down the next morning saying like I bought an American Girl doll and it was like this big thing. He was like, sort of like um okay but yeah he's not into dolls but at the same time he's super supportive of my hobby probably even more so than he should be but uh yeah he's not into dolls at all and he wasn't into him as a kid either but uh totally supportive of my obsession so that's really great since you mainly collect historicals were you already into history as a kid or did american girl spark that interest uh, funnily enough, I actually was never into history and I still kind of am not. And I don't know if that makes me, uh, unintelligent or whatever, but I just, I don't find history that interesting. I am very interested in toys and like the history of toy making and stuff. But as far as like learning about all the different wars and all that stuff, you know, that was a real chore for me in school. I never liked history as a subject. And truth be told, like reading the American Girl books as a child, you know, I think a lot of times in my mind, because I was so young when I was reading, I was in like first grade, I feel like maybe second grade. But uh, in a lot of ways, those stories felt like contemporary stories to me because I was so young and kind of didn't understand the context of, you know, different periods in time as much. I mean, I knew they were historical dolls, but, you know, I just remember reading them and just relating to them, you know, in a lot of different ways and their like behaviors and things. So it didn't feel like reading history books to me. You know, I just I was reading stories. And again, they tied back into the dolls. And I think for me, reading those stories brought the dolls to life and sort of it, like I could read them and sort of feel like I had the dolls for some reason. I feel like that's really why I enjoyed those stories. It was like more of a capitalist venture than it was like for the love of history. So that's probably a disappointing answer for some people, but I'm actually really not that into history despite collecting historical dolls. It's just I really like these dolls and they remind me of a specific part of my childhood. And yeah, I don't know. That's that's an honest answer. What was your dream doll as a kid? So uh, as far as American Girl is concerned, Molly and Samantha were my dream dolls. I kind of wanted them equally. I would say maybe Molly just a little bit more because I love the glasses and the pigtails and everything. And she was like a little bit more of a modern doll. So those two really were my favorite, even though at any given point, like I wanted all of them. But if I could have only picked one, depending on the day, I probably would have picked Molly or Samantha. And my other dream doll as a kid, as far as Barbie is concerned, is the superstar Barbie from 1988. She was the one I went around begging everybody to buy me and nobody bought her for me so I think I'm gonna get her when I move back to North Carolina as a coming home present so she'll probably show up on the channel before too long but those were my dream dolls as a kid. Which American Girl character do you relate the most to and why? 
Uh, that's actually a very easy answer for me. It's Nikki Hoffman, actually, the newest historical twin doll. The character is kind of similar in age to me. I was born in 1984, and I think she was born in 1990. So, you know, we were kind of coming of age around the same time. And just this story about the doll, or the doll, or the character being, you know, into alternative rock and kind of an anxious black sheep. I mean, that was totally me. So definitely like reading through her journal, I was like, yeah, this is definitely the doll I relate the most to in the entire American Girl franchise. As a male collector, what did you think about the SNL sketch? Okay, the Saturday Night Live sketch, I actually did a full reaction video too, so I won't like touch on it too much here. Uh, so if you wanna see a full reaction, uh, hop back a few videos and watch that. But mainly, you know, I thought it was pretty funny other than the jokes about predators, which I absolutely hate. I think it's so stupid that they put that stigma on, you know, adult male doll collectors. We are generally very empathetic, harmless people that are just, you know, trying to, you know, get back a piece of our childhood that we missed out on. So, yeah, it kind of sucks to be painted with a predator brush because that, that just, you know, that sucks. But other than that, I thought there were some funny jokes in it. But, you know, it's not the funniest thing I've seen in my entire life, I have to say. Which American girl places have you visited? I actually haven't visited any of them. Uh, again, because when I was younger, those didn't exist. So by the time they were a thing, I was a full grown adult. And so I was in Chicago once and walked by one and secretly wished I could have gone in there. But you know, it was just me and I wasn't gonna be like a 25 year old guy like walking through the American girl store. I was way too self-conscious at the time. So I, that's, I've been outside of it, but I've never actually been in one. But I'm hoping to be able to visit the American American Girl Place in Charlotte uh, when we're back in the South. So that would be really nice to do just to kind of have that experience because I know they're closing a lot of those stores and I really want to see one before they all close down because I think, you know, it's kind of sounding like they're only going to have like the New York, LA and Chicago ones. And so I would really like to see the one in Charlotte um, and hopefully it stays open. Have you been to meetups with other collectors? I actually haven't and it might be something I do eventually, but generally things like that are not my favorite thing in the world to do because I generally don't like parties and like big groups of people. And weirdly enough, I don't have social anxiety or anything. I'm actually really good around people and I don't feel nervous around others. Again, I think that's just a life skill I've picked up along the way. So it's not so much that I'm anxious about it. It's just that I prefer uh, hanging out with people one-on-one -on -one and kind of getting to know someone face to face and having a direct conversation with somebody versus like being in a crowd of people. And it's like, okay, do I talk to this person and then I turn around and talk to this person it just can be like I don't know it's just not my favorite way to communicate with people because a lot of times you know it just I, like I said it's awkward even though I'm not nervous about it it's just I prefer one-on-one -on -one stuff so if I do meetups it's probably going to be more like friends that I've known for a while online that are into dolls and maybe like meeting up at the American Girl Place or something so I don't know that I'll do many if any like large group meetups because they're just really not my thing do you sometimes find yourself adopting the habits of the characters from the American Girl books? Uh, as an adult, no, I would say. I actually haven't read the book since I was a child, but I do have one funny story. Uh, I believe it was in Felicity's book, uh, Felicity Learns a Lesson. It doesn't, again, I haven't read it since like the early 90s, but from memory, I think she was at a tea lesson or something and she lost her tooth in a cup of tea. Is that right? I'm almost certain it was Felicity's book, but I remember having a loose tooth when I read that. And I remember going and getting, it probably wasn't like a hot tea because that's not really a common thing to drink in the South. So I probably went and got a big glass of sweet tea. And, uh, but anyway, I remember sitting in our kitchen table and like yanking on my tooth trying to pull it out and like drop it in a glass of tea so that I could like read the book and experience the same thing in real life. That's really weird but that's what I did. Is there a particular item or collection that screams nostalgia for you? I would have to say the books, honestly, because like I said, it was just the catalogs and the books that I had as a kid. So to me, like just being able to flip through the catalog and look at the original images from them, that really brings so many memories back. It's it's so funny. Actually, flipping through the catalog is what makes me feel the most nostalgic even now that I have pretty much everything from those catalogs. It's a kind of a different experience to have them in person. So like, I feel like it, when I look at these dolls, a lot of times... I start to remember like buying them and the experience of getting them. And it's more of an adult uh, memory than it is a nostalgic thing. It's really weird. So yeah, I would definitely say like the books and the catalog and, you know, especially the illustrations in the books when I flip through those, cause I don't look at them all day, every day. 
you know, just seeing some of those original illustrations really kind of takes me back. <laughs> Do you watch figure skating? I don't, but I'm actually quite into women's elite gymnastics. So if any of y'all are like into Simone Biles and <laughs> all of the craziness that's been going on in elite gymnastics over the last few years, especially like shout out because that's my favorite sport and actually the only sport I watch. So yeah, I was into gymnastics basically from 1996 onwards. I mean, who can remember like Carrie Strug landing that vault on one foot? Like I was hooked on that sport the minute I saw that. So yeah, I've been pretty much a lifelong fan of women's elite gymnastics, but that's the only sport I watch. How many dolls do you have? I actually had to count when I wrote this question down because I haven't been keeping a tally, but if you count every single doll, like American Girl doll, because everything that's not American Girl, I don't have a whole lot that's outside of American Girl, but the number of 18 inch American Girl dolls I have is exactly 50. <laughs> to some of you, that's probably a lot. Some of you, I think, have hundreds of dolls. So I feel like I kind of fall like in the middle of the pack as far as like how many dolls I have. I feel like for how serious of a collector I am, I feel like 50 is actually a pretty good number, especially because I've only been collecting for like two years. Why do you have multiples of the same dolls? That's actually a really good question. And that person said they weren't trying to like offend me or anything. And of course, I'm not offended by that question because I collect really differently than the average collector because I'm so interested mainly in the stuff that I remember in the catalogs from my childhood, which is basically the first five historical dolls. So I, and, and again, I'm really mainly interested in Molly Kirsten and Samantha because they're the ones I remember the most. And you know, the early dolls had a lot of changes that happened over the first few years. Like if you look at a 1986 Samantha versus a 1987 Samantha, they are very different looking as is the 1988 Samantha is also very different looking. So I feel like when you buy dolls from that era, they all look totally different. It's even like some that were out of the same batch, just the way that they were made in the goods factory, they have like a tendency to all look extremely different. So if you get attached to a doll, I would advise you to not sell her because you'll never see a doll like that again. They just all look so different. So to me, whenever I buy like a 1986 or 1987 Samantha, Molly, or Kirsten, I always feel like it looks completely different from the last one I bought. And it's just kind of fun to collect the early variations because they made a lot of changes to like the eyes and the, the face paint color and stuff in the early years. So I really like having those early variations. So yeah, again, most of my dolls are white body dolls. So that means like, they're for the most part they're 1986 and 1987 and with a, a couple rare exceptions so I don't even collect the later white bodies I just really like the variations from the first two years of the company who was your first doll okay so that doll that I bought like in the middle of the night on eBay was actually a 1992 Molly and I regrettably returned her to the seller because she smelled like she just had like a really terrible attic smell and she had silver eye and by the time she had gotten to me I realized I bought a doll from the incorrect year so I really wanted, uh, once I had time to think about it, I, I knew that I wanted a doll from 1991, but I didn't at the time realize that there were so many differences and stuff. So I just, you know, I it was a, an impulse purchase and she looked really cute to me in photos, but I returned her to the seller and I wish I had it. And I'm kind of thinking about putting the eBay pictures because I still have them out on the Facebook groups and see if I can find the person that bought her and see if they'll sell her to me. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, that was my first doll. And then the doll I bought after that was the 35th anniversary Molly. So the doll I have on hand that I kind of think of as my first doll is the 35th anniversary Molly. What is the best deal you've gotten on an item in your collection? That would be, well, I actually had to write this one down too, because there were a lot of things that I've gotten good deals on and some things I've gotten some really bad deals on. But my best deal I'd have to say was my Dreamer Molly, which I've talked about what a Dreamer doll is in a previous video, but essentially it's a very rare version of Molly from 19, I'm going to say 1988, even though some people are going to argue that they're from 1987. But it's a very rare version of Molly that generally, I've seen them sell for as high as $3,000. So they're very coveted and and I've had several at one time, but the one I got the best deal on is actually the one I ended up keeping. I got her for $150 with like several outfits and I basically sold all the outfits and this total of those sales was $150. So I essentially have a free Dreamer Molly and I absolutely love that doll. It's so cool that I got her for free. So I'd like just feel a little less guilty about having her. <laughs> 
What was your first purchase directly from American Girl? That was my 35th anniversary, Molly. What are your collection goals? I love this question because I basically think about this every single day because I have a spreadsheet where I keep track of everything that I have in my collection and it's very detailed. It's um, basically the spreadsheet itself. I might actually do a separate video on this because a, a lot of people might be interested in this, but it's basically I have uh, tabs for every single doll or doll line that I collect. So I have ones for like Molly, Samantha, Kirsten, Felicity, and Addie, and it has their entire collections with pictures and descriptions and like the years on them so I basically go in there and I put what I paid for it and you know what year is on the tag or like what year it was made and then I have like additional tasks for like our new baby and American Girl today and stuff like that but so anyway my collection goals are basically right now I want to finish my Molly Samantha Kirsten Felicity and Addie collections and Molly Samantha and Kirsten are a about complete there's just like a few random things for Kirsten I need that actually aren't even that difficult to find they're just kind of they've been kind of stubborn to find a decent deal on a first edition so I'm almost done with Kirsten and then Molly and Samantha are pretty much complete like I um, even have some really really rare things for those two dolls that I thought I would never get but yeah my goals are just to finish the full complete collections for the first five historical dolls uh, with everything that was made for them before 1994. All right, this video is getting kind of long and I'm starting to lose my voice. So I think this is probably a good place to cut it off for now. So we'll make that part one. I hope you enjoyed getting to know me a little bit. This was really fun to do and I can't wait to film the next part. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button because it really helps my channel out a lot. So I really appreciate it when you do that. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel because I would love to have you along for my doll collecting journey. But anyway, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. Thanks again for a thousand subscribers. We're already almost at 1200, which is really exciting. I can't wait to continue to grow this channel. And I just wanted to say thanks again for helping me do that. I've got my collection tour coming up. I'm gonna try my best to have my first part of my collection tour up on Sunday. So that's just a few days from now. So if you're watching this in the future, be sure to watch that because it's been my most anticipated video and I'm so excited to finally have it online. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks so much again. Please take care of yourself and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.